I love being in God's house with God's people, and I'm very excited about this message today. I believe uh, with all of my heart in it um, that God has uh, given it to us today and uh, that you can get something out of it that it will help you, hopefully help you the rest of your life uh, as you walk with Jesus. I believe in it that much this morning. And a lot of the worship songs, as as usual, uh, tied in greatly. Uh, we didn't plan that. It just seemed to happen. So God, God has a word, and it's my privilege to be able to uh, bring it to you this morning. So open your Bibles to the book of First Thessalonians chapter number 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. I don't know what this is, but I'm going to pick it up. I've got ADD here. If I see that, that's going to, that's going to distract me. 1 Thessalonians, uh, I'm going to read verse number, uh, chapter, verse, chapter number 3, verse 10. And then we'll, I'll backtrack just a, just a hair, but I want to read this one kind of to draw in, I guess, the theme for what this message is all about this morning. First Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. This is Paul speaking. Uh, he's writing a letter to the church at Thessalonica. And it says, as, as we pray more earnestly night and day that we may see you face to face and supply what is lacking in your faith. Let's pray today. That's what I want to preach about this morning. What is lacking in your faith? Heavenly Father, we come before you humbly this morning. We thank you for your presence that we've already felt, uh, Lord, in this service, for your anointing upon the songs, the words, the testimonies. And uh, God, we just pray that this morning as we turn to your word, God, that we might have ears to hear it. Uh, Lord, minds uh, open and clear, Lord, to understand what you're speaking to us, God, and that we might have hands and feet to do it. Uh, just, I pray for your anointing this morning. I recognize my limitations as a mere man, uh, but through the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you can use me to speak a word, God, uh, that will, we, Lord, I just pray that, that all doubt would lose ground in our hearts today, Lord, that we might be a people of true and pure, uh, unwavering faith. We pray it in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Amen. So this, I, I would encourage you to go back and read First Thessalonians, the first three chapters. Um, in, this, in this book, Paul is writing to this church, uh, and these were, these were good Christian people he's speaking to. And remember, we wanna, we're, we're really focusing on that last line. He said, I want to come see you that I might supply what is lacking in your faith. But when we go back and we read in the first three chapters, uh, these were people of great faith. Let me just read a couple excerpts. It's not going to be on the screen. I just kind of want to uh, share with you what kind of Christians these were. Uh, he commends them in verse 3, says, Your work of faith and labor of love, steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. That's, how, that's the word he uses to describe these people's faith, steadfast. He goes on to say that they had become an example to other believers in Macedonia and Achaia. They had that kind of faith that other people were patterning their walk with Jesus after. Uh, he says, your faith in God has gone forth everywhere so that we need not say anything. In other words, they had such great faith that they were known by everybody uh, as people of great faith. Now, the, Paul, the reason Paul wrote this letter was because the church at Thessalonica uh, was enduring immense persecution, okay? I mean, they were going through some really, really hard times, and Paul really wanted to go to that church and try to comfort them and help them through this persecution. He was concerned that they would lose their faith, and that's what he says literally in verse number five. For this reason, when I could bear it no longer, I sent to learn about your faith for fear that somehow the tempter had tempted you and our labor would be in vain. Paul wanted to go there and encourage them so that they wouldn't lose faith in the midst of their trials. Paul couldn't get there. One hindrance after another, he himself could not go. So he sends Timothy, okay? Timothy goes to the church of Thessalonica, but he discovers, verse number six, but now that Timothy has come to us from you, has brought us good news of your faith and love. So he couldn't go, so he sends Timothy. Timothy goes and he finds out, man, these people are holding in there. I mean, their faith is strong. He comes back and reports to Paul, Hey, you don't have to worry about the church of Thessalonica. These people are steadfast. I mean, they're really doing, they're a great example to everybody. So Paul is writing this letter to commend them for the great faith that they have. These were good, solid Christian people. They were not faithless fakes. So why would he write to them, I still want to come that I might supply what is lacking in your faith. Paul is acknowledging that there may be areas in their faith that they're not as strong as they could be. Doesn't mean they're not good Christians. It means there's always areas for improvement. There's weaknesses sometimes as human beings. And Paul says, I want to take your good faith, your great faith to amazing faith, right? Unmovable faith. 
So you got to understand now as we go through this, Paul is not scolding them. I mean, he's acknowledged, hey, I want to come and, and strengthen that which is lacking in your faith. He's acknowledging maybe there's areas, but he's not scolding them for that. He's wanting to help them recognize it and to help them overcome it. This literally shows us that no matter how much we love Jesus, there can be areas lacking in our faith. Maybe more than one you can identify with today that doesn't make us a weak Christian. The weakest Christians are the ones that don't admit their weaknesses. Isn't that true? Amen? To put on a front and acknowledge no weakness or moments in our faith where we're weak. To put on a front is to be fake. And fake helps nobody. Amen? Paul was very honest with them. I want you to be real. I want to be real with you. And that's what we want to do this morning is to come here this morning and just be real. We're, we're not some sort of superhuman Christians that don't ever doubt, don't ever wonder, don't ever struggle. We all have those moments um, along the way. That doesn't mean you don't really believe in Jesus. Doesn't mean you're a weak Christian. We're going to see this today. Faith, faith is not a, a one-stop shop in which we get perfect faith the moment we're saved. I wish we did. Right? I wish, I wish that was the case. But it's not. Faith is a long-haul endeavor. Right? It, it's a work in progress. Faith is a lifelong project. Let's put it that way. God has given every person a measure of faith, the Bible says. I believe that to be just enough, safe, uh, just enough faith to get saved with. Amen? Installed in every human being, given just enough faith to be saved with. And when we exercise that faith and God saves us, we begin to learn faith every day of our life. Amen? It's not some sort of perfect faith. We're perfect right off and we never struggle in it. Not at all. God does not need us to pretend that we don't have areas lacking in our faith. God, God's a big boy. God knows our heart anyway, right? He knows our struggles and our weaknesses. He doesn't need us to pretend that we don't have these weaknesses. He wants us to confess them so that we can overcome them. Amen? Because I believe there is an overcoming. We may not overcome all of our weaknesses and lacks in faith and our doubts in a moment's time, but over a period of throughout life, we begin to see our faith get stronger. Amen? And it does. That, that's the way faith was intended to be, that we, it gets stronger the more we trust in Jesus. So reading this this week, Paul saying, okay, I want to come and I want to supply that which is lacking in your faith. It, it's kind of sparked a question in my mind. Okay, well, what areas could there be? that lack in a Christian's faith. And I, I started thinking of, of different things, and I've got some thoughts, but here's what, here's what come to me. I had this idea. I took a survey, okay? I sent a text to 20 of the most devoted Christians that I know this week. Now, if you didn't get a text, it doesn't mean that I don't think you're a devoted Christian, <laughs> by the way. It means I started out a text group, and it made me stop at 20. That's the only reason you probably didn't get a text. Um, so I sent out a text to 20 people. Again, these are the most devoted Christians that I know. People right here in this church, in this congregation, leadership even, and so on and so forth. Uh, it's, it's, it's it, it was a bit of a, a pulse of our peers, if you will. And I asked them this question. I explained to them the heart of this message, and I asked them the question, what is an area that could be lacking in your faith? And folks, these, these folks, and the point of, of this, again, is for you and I to see that the people that we look at as the strongest people of faith, they struggle too. You are not alone. I'm not alone. We're not alone. We all have these moments, right? Um, and these, these people were vulnerable. They made themselves vulnerable. They were honest, and they said, and didn't hesitate to say, here, this is, this, is kind of, this is an area that I struggle with. I seem to be strong here, but I seem to be weak here. Now, I'm not going to mention names, but I want to read to you the comments. I'm going to share, and I told them that I would. I want everybody to hear what some specific areas of our faith that could be lacking. I have no doubt in my mind that everybody in this room will identify with one or more or all, maybe, of all of these things. Areas are lacking. But so as we read through this, I want you to understand, though, the point of this is not to just expose what areas are lacking, but to, to give some hope that our faith can and will grow stronger. When we acknowledge those areas of weakness to God, we commit them to him and pray, God, strengthen my weaknesses. I even believe that, that, that through the power of the Holy Spirit, our weaknesses can actually become our strengths. I've known people who were maybe weak in a certain area of faith that went through something and then in, in the end, God proved himself so mighty that they're stronger in that area than any other. You get my, you get my point. So here's what I found. What it, in what area 
could you be lacking in your faith? One of them was consistency. There was actually two people that uh, responded in this area. Consistency, I would say, is lacking in my faith. Here's the comment. <clears throat> my faith varies from day to day and situation to situation. There are times that when I have there are times when I have faith to call down fire from the mountain and other days where I can barely make it through the day. It depends on where my eyes are. If I'm looking at Jesus, I can walk on water. But when I look at anything else, I start to sink. Anybody relate to that at all? The other one said, I'm, I usually am more solid on the big trials, but I tend to be a wreck about the little things. I come from a long line of worriers. So that consistency, some, some things I can trust God for, some things I can't. I can, I can and, I, and I was honest with them, I, I can definitely identify with that. Times where you just, man, you have no doubt, God's got this, I ain't worried. And other times you worry. It's, a, it's an inconsistency, right? It's an it's a area of weakness within our faith. Consistency, consistency literally changes the source of our influence. Well, this one says, I come from a long line of worriers. So where uh, doubt spreads doubt, Correct. But faith spreads faith. And we see that throughout the scripture. And, it, and it's true. We, we sometimes we, just, we come from that long line and influencers or whatever. And we can become very inconsistent. We see this in the, nature, the, uh, in the nature of the nation of Israel. Their inconsistency, right? So they, they're standing at the Red Sea. God parts it. Their faith is strong. They walk across. Man, God, you're awesome. You can do anything. Three days later, they come to a place where the water isn't fit to drink or they can't find water and they're they're doubting and they're they're doubting God he's forsaken I see the inconsistency I can trust him one day but sometimes I have trouble trusting him the next kind of like the uh, the, uh, uh, the the disciples when they're in the boat with Jesus and they have no bread and they're 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 worried oh gosh we only brought one loaf of bread among you know 13 people Af just after they had sat there while Jesus fed thousands of people with just a couple loaves you get the point it's inconsistency Consistency might be an area where we're lacking in our faith. One said, uh, resiliency. I lack resiliency in my faith. Even though I know and, and believe deep down that God is the answer in all situations, when faced with certain difficulties, trials, doubts, etc., I find myself shying away from God due to a fear that if I seek him through his word and prayer, I may find something or get an answer I don't like or understand. I can relate to that. I like what this person said. I'm going to try my hardest not to use pronouns today because if I say she said or he said, you, you know, I may give somebody this position away. I, I really like what this person said. So they've com combated this, this uh, resiliency. This, you know, resiliency is the, the ability to, to bounce back really, you know, quickly after, after something. It's, and this person said, I've combated this with forced consistency. Uh, you know, we just talked about that's one area that we lack maybe in consistency. Forced consistency in study time and prayer to make sure and seek God in, in daily life, even if it gives an undesirable answer. You know, there's the, the thing about the child of God, we're, we're drawn to God, right? I mean, we're all here today because we're drawn here. We, we want to be here and we study God's word and we sing and we pray because we want to draw closer to God. But our flesh sometimes gets in the way and sometimes our flesh just don't want to. Right, sometimes our flesh, maybe you woke up this morning, your flesh wanted to do something else. There's some project you got going on or you wanted to go somewhere else or you get ready to, to, to pray and you'd rather do, there's all this thing. And sometimes, folks, we just got to force ourselves. Okay, that's not the way we should be all the time, obviously, you know, that we're drawn to God. But there are times where we just, we go by what we know we should do. I'm going to do what is right even when I don't feel like it. This person, for, so resiliency, sometimes it lacks just, I, 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 I'm almost afraid to go to God because I'm almost afraid of what he's going to tell me. Afraid of how he's going to lead me. The next one is uh, follow through. There's a couple that had, that said this, uh, you know, what could be lacking in my faith? Follow through. In other words, the, uh, the works that follow salvation. You know, prayer, study, devotion, medita meditation. I've seen the word distractions in several things. Distractions, dist distractions, distractions. Nothing will distract you more than distractions right? Let's face it. And there are lots of them within life. What, what lacks? Well, it's just that follow through. I love God. I believe in God. I trust in God. But to follow through with what God is wanting me to do. I, I'm going to read this for you in Philippians chapter 2 verse 12 says, therefore my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence. Look at this. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. 
For it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Now, a lot of people have misinterpreted the scripture as to imply that this means work out your own salvation means you can just kind of make, you, you can kind of work out your own deal with God on how you're saved. That is not what this is saying. It's saying working out your own salvation. In other words, you're saved by faith, through, you know, by faith only, by grace. But we work it out from that moment forward. Faith grows in us and, and we do the works that God calls us to do, the works of a Christian. And sometimes that follow through can fall short. Been there? Sure. I think we all have. The next one, uh, patience. What could be lacking in a Christian's faith? Patience. There's three people that responded in this regard. One said, when I don't see God working fast enough in situation, or excuse me, yeah, I don't see, when I, I get discouraged when I don't see God working fast enough in situations. Uh, I'm not able to see what God is doing because of the things I think he isn't doing. That was, that's big. Sometimes I can't see what God is doing because I, I'm all caught up in what I think God is not doing. Another one said, the hardest part of my faith is leaving my prayers in God's hands, trusting God's perfect timing and not my flawed timing. I pray and I, I want it right now. Uh, uh, if I don't get it immediately, I'm going to just immediately assume that means that God has just not listened. And not, it's not always the case. Patience may be an area that is, that is lacking. God is way more patient than we are. Amen? He is not as concerned about making things happen on our time schedule as, as we think that he would. So the, early, the quicker we can understand that and come to grips with that, the better. Amen? I think, I honestly believe, I know this based on my own life. I have, I know in my own walk, I have prolonged answered prayers by my own impatience. Had I been more patient, had I trusted God a little better, may come around a little bit quicker. I don't know. The, the third one said, I struggle to believe that God is seeing my broken heart and hearing me when I pray. I find myself even getting angry and asking God why he's waiting to answer what I've prayed for, even for years, while it seems that my prayers are having the opposite effect. Sometimes I pray for things and it just what I'm praying for seems to get worse. Again, I want you to understand these are excellent, fine, devoted Christian people that are bearing their soul. There's times I just get frustrated with God because it just, I, I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm praying and I don't seem to see any results and it almost seems as though it's getting worse. The next one was, uh, what could be lacking in your faith? There was several in this area. Um, I'm going to call it the big stuff. Okay, this is the, uh, uh, the why ask factor. And I think you'll understand what I'm talking about as I go through this. Uh, one says, knowing that God can, for example, heal people such as cancer, finding it, I find it hard to believe that he will heal them. There's a big gap between what I know God can do and what I know God will do. Isn't that true? Is, that's a struggle. I, I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how much we deny it, we all struggle with that at some point in time. There's what God can do, what, what God will do. We don't always know uh, that, that case. And so it kind of can bring us, if we're not careful, bring us to this place of, well, then why, you know, why even ask? Uh, why do some people get healed? Why do some people don't? Another person said this, um, you know, on this same area, you know, why, why people who could do so much for, for God die and, and people who do nothing for God survive? And, and by the way, I'm going to say, I'm not, my purpose in bringing this out is not to go through here and, and answer each one of these, because I'm going to be honest with you, I don't, I'm not going to get up here and proclaim to you that I know the answers to each one of these, okay? We're, we're, as human beings, we're being real here this morning, right? In which we're saying, here's areas of our faith. Now, we're going to talk in the end. I ain't going to leave you hanging. I believe that, I believe with all of my heart, we can overcome these things. I do. Uh, if, otherwise, Paul wouldn't have said, hey, I want to come and supply that which is lax in your faith, right? Um, let's see, another one said, um, uh, the times that I and other Christians have, have had faith, you know, that, some, some time, that someone would be healed, uh, but they died. Uh, makes my faith lack a little the next time I pray for that very th same thing. Another one said, I have no trouble trusting God for the day today, as I expect his subtle hand uh, to make things work out. I struggle to believe for the big miracles, though. I don't really expect those Hail Mary prayers to, to work on impossible things um, the way that we should. Um, what could be lacking in your faith? One said, uh, forgiveness. This is a big one, I think, probably, maybe in, in a lot of people's hearts. What, what really lacks in your own faith is forgiving other people. Um, some people have a hard time forgiving forgiving themselves. Sometimes, have a, sometimes people have a hard time really truly believing and trusting that God has forgiven them, right? Holding the, that guilt and the shame. And we, folks, if there's one thing God wants you to believe, if you don't believe anything else, when your sins are gone, they're gone. Amen? God loves you despite it all. But this one specifically was forgiving other people. Um, they write, 
A close family member hurt me more than I've ever been hurt before, and I struggle with forgiving that person. I ask God to help strengthen my faith uh, and understanding to be able to let this uh, go, but I, I struggle at times. Um, these are times where we leaning, we, we have to lean, like the one person said, you know, it's, it's forced uh, consistency. In other words, I, I, I do what is right, even though I don't necessarily feel it, but I know it's right, so I'm going to do it because I know that I'm going to benefit from it. And it's the same way in this particular situation. Sometimes we, we have to lean heavily on the fact that God has forgiven us, and that gives us faith to forgive um, other people, right? Even though maybe sometimes, no matter however faint that faith may be, um, a couple wrote that peace was lacking in their faith in different, in different ways. One says, uh, I struggle with anxiety and worry. Um, even though God spoke to me through Philippians 4, 6 through 7, I still struggle to give him all my anxious ways and thoughts. One said, while I trust God to do what is best for me and, and close family, I'm scared of what that looks like if I have to endure heartache and pain in order to have God's best for me. In other words, if I pray for a situation, uh, it may take a trial for that prayer to be answered. And I really want things to stay comfortable. I'm scared of losing what I have. Again, it's when I pray, what is that really going to ultimately look like? Do we trust God to bring about the results of our prayer in the way that he knows is the best, right? It would be easy for us to pray if God would do it our way, correct? But if God is insistent on doing things his way, that's a little harder sometimes to trust God with. Um, one uh, area is uh, confidence in truth. wasn't necessarily for them as much as what we see in the world around us, but I'll, I'll explain. I, I call it the what is truth factor, right? And this is what they write. There are so many presentations out there uh, about what truth is that it can be easy for us uh, to get distracted from the real truth. So there's always false doctrine, false teachings that are hammering away at our faith. Is that true? We have faith in Jesus Christ and we know and believe with all of our heart, based on the word of God, Jesus is the only way to be saved. He's the only way to go to heaven. Everybody who rejects Jesus Christ will go to hell. We know that, we believe that, but there's a lot of people out there who don't believe that, right? There's a lot of teachings, there's a lot of religions that don't believe that way. And so we have this coming at us that can hinder our faith if we're not careful. So even if it hasn't deterred our faith, like this person, wasn't that they were struggling necessarily with what truth is, but it gets very discouraging as we see it detour the faith of other people. Um, they go on to say that they, they long to have the same confidence before the answer comes as they have felt after the answer comes. I like that. And they give an example of a situation, something they're praying for that just was really hard and almost impossible, and they knew that God was at work. But peace probably wasn't there the way that it should be. And then God worked it all out. And after God worked it out, total confidence, right? Total confidence in God. Oh, he's got this. If, what if we could have that kind of confidence even before the answer comes? Amen? Okay, the last one. Um, what could be lacking in your faith? Uh, this, this one was self-reliance. I like this one. This is really good. I hadn't thought about this one. So this is what they write. When facing a challenging situation or a tough decision, I often fail to go to the Lord for help, thinking I can do everything in my own strength, wisdom, and intelligence. When things are easy, I can acknowledge God's involvement in my life, but when things get hard, I take the controls. Afterwards, I praise him for bailing me out and feel remorse because I didn't turn it over to him. It's an amazing thing. If you remember back now, th this shows just how individual our faith walk is. Amen? We're all in the same boat, but we're all, we all got a different paddle, you might say. I mean, it's an individual faith walk we're in, and God knows us so individually and intimately. God interacts with us individually in order to build our faith where it needs building. God knows where we lack in our faith, and he wants us to help build that. I just thought it was so interesting. One person struggled to trust God with the big things, but didn't have a hard time you know, trusting him with the little things. Somebody else said, I struggle to trust God for the little things, but I don't struggle to trust him for the big things. See how different we are? But God interacts with us individually in our individual faith walk. I, just a couple others I want to throw out there that I, I thought of, um, that uh, whether experiencing it in my own life or, or, or witnessing it in the others, but what are other areas that maybe we could be lacking in our faith? Um, one would be maybe stability, that steadfastness we were talking about, that the endurance. Uh, we kind of it's kind of that it's kind of that seed in the stony ground type thing, right? 
the, I, I hear the word of God and I immediately receive it. Oh yes, I want to be in on this. I want to go to heaven. But as soon as trials come, uh, you know, temptations, tribulations, and all those types of things, um, we have a tendency maybe to, that, that's when, um, that's when it makes it easy to bail. Okay. That's when it makes it easy to bail. Oh, well, I, I, I'm just, I'm not even going to, I don't need this. Apparently church isn't going to, apparently church doesn't work. We see, we see this happen all the time. Somebody gets, their life gets in a bad situation, um, never really given much thought to God, but now they're, I'm going to come to church for a little while and see if that helps. It doesn't get fixed in two weeks, so they're gone. There's no stability in that faith. There was a, maybe a spark of faith, but there wasn't any real stability there that held them. We, we want, folks, I want, I want unwavering. I'm not saying I have it. I, I, believe me, I, there are plenty of, uh, you know, things lacking in my own faith. I, I'm, I'm in this uh, long haul endeavor just like you are. I long for unwavering faith. I feel like if I had that, I feel like if we had unwavering faith, nothing else would matter. Yeah. I mean, because whatever we go through, we, it, it, it's covered, right? I mean, every battle, every fear, every temptation, unmovable, unwavering, unshakable faith that is always constant and consistent. In Colossians chapter 1, Paul writes, uh, And you who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he is now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him, if indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which was, has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven. We're not shifting from that gospel. We're not, bad things are happening, so I have, we have no root, right? That's what happens in the parable of the sower, right? The seed was planted. It's, this, it sprung up immediately, which symbolizes somebody who immediately receives the gospel, but there's no root there to keep them nourished and to keep them steadfast when the trials comes. We need our, we need our roots of faith to be stronger. Amen? What is the most important thing about a tree as it stands in the storm? Is it not its root system? The stronger its root, no matter how big and strong it looks on, on the top, what matters is how strong its roots are. It doesn't matter how Christian-like we look, how Christian-like we talk, or how Christian-like we act, or what kind of show we put on to make it, so we don't, want to, we, we don't want to make it look like we're weak in our faith. It is all about how strong our faith roots are. Amen? God strengthen our faith roots. Another thing that might be lacking in our faith, and just a couple things here real quick. I don't want to preach this whole message on each one of these things, but uh, humility maybe. Uh, sometimes it's easy for us to get caught up in, in, in wanting to please uh, people more than pleasing God right? True faith is when we, our goal is to please God no matter, no matter who it fuzzes, right? Uh, one thing that might be lacking in our faith is fruit. Maybe, because that's, because there's always fruit that comes from faith, right? When we have faith, faith is a seed, and seed grows, and seed, when once seed grows, uh, it produces fruit, and so there's that testimony. I have faith. What did Paul say I, I'll show you. I'll show you my faith by my works, right? In other words, the fruit that comes. You, you've got this faith, but maybe nobody around you knows it. That's that would be an area of of weakness in your faith. What if you pray and ask God, God, I, give me faith that the fruit will begin to show. That maybe I can reach other people with my faith. Maybe what's lacking in your faith is confession. You you believe it in your heart. I mean, you've you God's been dealing with you, and maybe you've even already asked God to forgive you for sins and. But you lack that, that ability, the boldness to confess it to other people. There's a little, it kind of goes back to you're a little more worried about what people think than you are what God thinks. And, and your faith lacks that confession. The Bible says that we believe in our heart, but we confess with our mouth. The faith is happening here, but we speak it that others, that, that others might know it without shame. Maybe freedom is lacking in your faith. You believe in Jesus, but you struggle with your flesh in some form or fashion, whether it's a, a besetting sin or, again, a fear or a worry or doubt. You just, your flesh seems to always fight you, and you just lack that freedom. That's the area in your faith. Maybe you, have, maybe you can believe it for others, but you can't believe it for yourself. A lot of times people struggle with that. I can pray, I believe for you, but I don't think God will ever do it for me. And some people may struggle the other way around. I believe God. I believe God to do anything for me, but I don't know that He'll do it for you. Maybe that consistency, that, that consistency in God's love and the fact that He is no respecter of persons. He loves you just as much as He loves me. He loves you just as much as He loved Moses. Amen. 
All these men and women of faith that we read about in Scripture, God loves you and is as concerned about you as he was each and every one of them. There is absolutely not one human being who has ever lived that God liked or loved more than the other. He loves us equally the same. Don't let your faith be hindered. So, lots of areas, and this isn't all of them. I'm sure you, maybe you're thinking of something in your own walk with God. Well, I lack in this area. You can identify with this one. So, so how do we fix it? I mean, so what do we, I, I, I mean, there's, uh, they're, 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 when, with Paul saying to them, I want to come and supply that which is lacking in your faith, that tells me that there must be a way for our faith to be strengthened uh, so we're not handicapped by these soft spots. Again, I'm not, I'm not going to stand up here and pretend that I, I'm going to read you a few verses and you, you're magically going to, all of these hindrances and areas of weakness are going to be gone and you're going to go out of here healing the lame. You might. I hope you do. That would be awesome. I'm saying that this is a walk. This is a fight. Faith is a fight. We have an enemy that's, that's out to destroy our faith. And so we, but we have to, we can't just, I guess let me, say, let me put it this way. We can either say, okay, well, I have this weakness in my faith and I'm just going to have it till I die. Or I can say, I, I want God to strengthen this in me. I want to get better here. Amen? Can we be on the same page there? So how, how do we go about it? Let me give you a few scriptures and, and just a few thoughts to chew on and to ponder on. I would encourage you to write these down, take these scriptures and, and read them. Over and over and over again. Uh, James chapter 1, uh, verses 2 through 8, writes this. My, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh, worketh patience. So what he's telling us there is to endure the trying of your faith. Understand that when you're facing these areas of lack in your faith and your faith is being tried, that's a good thing. That's a good thing when your faith is tried because it means that God is building it. It's strength. You've heard me say this a lot. You can't trust, something can't be trusted if it can't be tested. I am not going to get on an airplane if it hasn't been tested. I'm not going to trust it unless it's been tested. I can't trust my faith unless it's been tested. And so God is constantly, and that's what, that's what James is writing here. Um, endure those those trials, embrace them. It's, is it excruciating? Yes, at times. But understand, it's God at work in you. Don't avoid everything that is hard. Let God do something in you and he'll bring you through it. He goes on to say this, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him. James said, look, every person needs wisdom. If you don't have any, ask for it. If you lack wisdom, ask God and he'll give you wisdom. I believe that that would apply to everything else, wouldn't it? If I lack faith, I should ask God for faith. Amen? Acknowledge it to God. I, I, know, it seems, I know it seems overly simple. Ask God, strengthen my faith. If you've got to pray it every day for the rest of your life, pray it. Strengthen my faith. Help me in this area. Lord, I lack unwavering faith. I lack consistent faith, Lord. Let me, let me use that one as an example. Lord, I lack consistent faith. I trust you sometimes, sometimes I don't. I don't want to be that way anymore. Lord, I want to, I want to trust you all the time. Help me to get there, okay? The Holy Spirit comes at work. I believe that that lack can be supplied. In Mark chapter 9, verse 28 says, and when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Lord, why could we not cast it out? There was a man who had a son who was demon-possessed. He brought his son to the disciples and said, Hey, you're Jesus' followers. Um, cast this demon out of my son. And they weren't able to do it. And so they were discouraged. They go to Jesus and they said, um, why, why weren't we able to cast this demon out? In other words, Lord, why did we pray and it didn't happen? I don't understand why we, we prayed and we prayed and we did all, said all the words and we prayed loud and we, we shook the guy's head and nothing happened. Um... Jesus says to them, well, it's because of your unbelief, right? Doesn't mean that, he didn't, he didn't, he wasn't scolding these people as being heathens. They obviously believed in Jesus and who he was, but there was, there was an area of weakness there. He says, because of your unbelief, he said, this kind can come out by nothing but by prayer and fasting. This is a, you're dealing with, you're dealing with demonic influences here, a power that is far greater than you are. Mere words of praying are not enough to overcome something like this. Sometimes, folks, when it comes to, when it comes to the, the, whether it be the challenges that we're praying about, just mere word here and there and mere prayer here and there is not enough. We got to get, sometimes got to get down and get serious with God. Amen? 
Let's, let's face it. Let's be honest. We're all being honest. We're being real here today. Sometimes we, we have a tendency. We just pray on the fly. And sometimes God says, if you really want some answers here, you're going to have to stop. You're going to have to stop. You're going to have to get serious. Prayer and, and fasting. I'm going to tell you something. You want to increase your faith, try a little prayer and fasting. It'll do it. It'll do it. Push away from, it's, it put this body aside for a little bit and say, God, I want you to, to strengthen me spiritually. I am telling you it works. Again, don't say, well, I skipped lunch and I still have this doubt. No, it's a long, lifelong endeavor. You get me? You get me? Got to pray. Got to fast. You got to really seek me on this one, guys. The disciples, as they watched Jesus praying, they said, Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. <laughs> this, this wasn't, Lord, teach me to say a prayer. This was, Lord, teach us to pray like that, right? Jesus prayed intently, Lord, teach us to pray like that. So, maybe what this tells me is, I don't want to just assume, well, I, because we'll say, well, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and nothing happened. Don't assume you're, that we're praying the right way, for one, I'm not saying that there, I hope you understand where I'm coming from. Don't, don't just assume that what you've done is, ex, is exactly right. There could, could it be that there's a, there's a whole other level of faith that God's trying to take me to? And this isn't, this isn't to try to explain away anything that maybe didn't happen. I'm just saying we either, we either acknowledge maybe there's an area that God can change me to make me more effective in my praying or I've got it all figured out and God's just not doing what I want him to do. I would venture to probably believe more the first way. Luke 17, the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. This was right after Jesus had just got done telling them that they have to forgive somebody every time they do them wrong. Every time somebody wrongs you, Jesus said, you have to forgive them. What, like seven times, Peter said? Like seven? I mean, that's kind of excessive. No, 70 times seven, Jesus says. So what Jesus is literally saying, you have to forgive somebody every time they wrong you. Okay. No, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to give them the keys to your car. We're talking forgiveness here, right? Got to forgive somebody every time they wrong you. And the disciples immediately pray, God, increase our faith. What were they saying? They're saying, Lord, that's an area of weakness in my faith. For me to do that, Lord, it's going to require a lot more faith than what I have right now. And I think every one of us probably can identify with that very thing, especially if you've been hurt. It's tough. It's, it's tough, ain't it? Not, not belittling, that, belittling that at all. Lord, increase our faith. But the funny thing about this, that kind of stood out to me, as, as the apostles, as, as the apostles uh, you know, said, Lord, increase our faith, we're going to need it to, to, to do what you're wanting us to do and to believe like you're wanting us to believe. The Lord said, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. What is Jesus saying? He's really not necessarily saying, he's basically saying, well, it's not necessarily that you need more faith. You've got it. You need to learn to use properly what you got, right? I haven't figured that out completely yet. I stand up here before you this morning as a man, and I, I, can, I haven't completely, I'm on an endeavor. I'm on a journey. Amen. I have learned so much about faith in the past 27 years I've served God. I've learned a lot about faith. And I can stand up here and I can say to you, even though I haven't had every prayer I've ever prayed answered, I can stand up here before you and boldly declare, God has been faithful to me. God is faithful. God can do anything. And I believe at times he does. Do I under, understand everything? I do not. I do not. But I don't want to stay there. Amen. I'm not, I'm not content staying here where I'm at in my faith journey. I want it to grow. I want it to be, be increased. I want to take what God has given me and learn to use it. A couple more thoughts, and I'm going to leave this with you. Not scriptures. These are just thoughts that kind of come to me as I was praying. You know, how, how do we combat this? There's just some things to ponder. Um, let your faith, however weak it may be, let your faith drive your thoughts and your actions, not your emotions, not your physical weaknesses. Faith is all about what you know, not about what you feel. I can't say that enough. We have a tendency, I, I, I get it, you know, our faith, and we feel God like in a worship service, and it feel, we feel God's presence, and that's, that's a wonderful thing. But true faith is just not about what you feel. You'll feel one thing one day and feel something else the next. Faith is what you know to be certain based on the word of God. Focus on what you know, not on what you feel. Focus less on asking God to change your circumstances and more on asking God to change you. That's a big one, amen? 
That's a big one. I'm not saying God won't change your circumstances, but I think, I think sometimes when we pray for God to tra- change our circumstances, he would rather change us. Amen? Number one, maybe the circumstances aren't as bad as we think they are. Number two, maybe that's ultimately, that was the point of the circumstances in the first place, that he might change us. God, change me. Help me to endure the circumstances, but ultimately through it, change me. Let my faith grow and be strong. Um, Understand this. This is big. Understand that it's not your faith holding on to God. Rather, it's God holding on to your faith. Amen? Amen? Oh, just, just trying to hang on to God, just trying to hang on. Our, our, my faith is so weak, and that's just not the way it is. God is holding us. There have been times, folks, my faith has been so weak. I, there's, there's been times, and I'm not going to go through, there's been times I've seen God do stuff, amazing stuff, sometimes when my faith was the weakest. I'm, I'm not kidding. I, there's just, I am convinced I'm not holding on to God. He's holding on to me. If this was all, if faith was all about me hanging on to God, I'd never make it, ever. I'm too weak for that. Faith is understanding that God has a hold of me and he's not going to let me go. He loves me too much. Amen? He's not going to let me go. He's not going to let you go. I don't care where you're at, what you've done, what you're battling. God's not going to let you go. And living by what we know instead of what we feel when we can't feel God, we know he's there, right? God is so patient with our faith struggles. I don't say any of this, by the way, to justify our doubts and our unbelief. I'm not, ever, I'm not here to say, oh, go your way. That's just, you're human. That's just the way you're going to be. I'm not trying to judge. Because Jesus scolded his disciples many times for their doubts and unbelief, right? He's, I, you know, Jesus saying, look, I understand you're human, but by now you ought to at least be able to, if you've watched me take bread and break it and feed multitudes, you ought to be able to trust me to feed 13 people in a boat. Right? So it's not to justify our our doubts and our unbelief or anything like that. It's just that, just to understand that he is so patient with us and and he is understanding and he would never leave leave it totally up to us to just have enough faith. Right? Oh, you just got to have enough faith. What is God up there saying? Oh, come on. You're you're almost there. Ah, man, sorry. You just didn't quite get there. I don't believe that's the way it works. I just don't believe that's the way it works. Satan, Peter, this is what Jesus said. This I promise you I'm bringing this in for a closing. Um, Jesus told Peter, and I quote, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed that your faith will not fail. So we talked about this a minute ago. Faith is a fight. It's a war. We're in a war. Satan wants nothing more than than to destroy the most important thing you have, and that's your faith. Your faith in Christ is more valuable than your home, your bank account, your car, your family. Your faith is the most valuable thing you have. And Satan knows that and that's why he's fighting to destroy it. That's why we fight in these areas of weakness. Because as much as you know what your area of weakness is in your faith, Satan does too, I promise you. And he's going to exploit that. Jesus says to to, to, Satan wants to sift you as wheat. He, he's going to attack your faith, but I'm praying that your faith will not fail. That is remarkable to me. Jesus doesn't say to Peter, I'm praying that you won't fail. He knew that Peter was going to fail. Peter was going to deny him. I'm, he didn't say, I'm praying that you won't fail. I'm praying that your faith will not fail. That brings me an enormous amount of comfort. I don't know about you. I mean, God didn't want me to fail. No, but it's not about whether or not I fail. It's about whether or not my faith fails. He wants our faith to be strong. Peter, I want your faith to be strong so that as soon as you do fail, you'll come running back to me knowing that I'm, here, I'm still here for you. That's exactly what happened. Understanding that faith, we have to understand what faith isn't. I think in, faith isn't pray hard enough and you get what you want. Faith isn't so much about praying until I get what I want as much as that it is continuing to pray even when I don't. Amen? That's real faith. Having faith in God's overall plan rather than my temporary plan. The big scheme of things, whether it's a healing or anything else, things don't happen. God's plan is so much bigger and God's plan is eternal. Right? Our, our thoughts are so temporary and sometimes faith is just a matter of us stepping back and saying, okay, God, big picture here. I can't see it, but you can and I'm just going to ride with you on this one. Right, I'm just going to trust you. And it's not going to deter me from trusting you again going, going forward within, you know, because I know that you're faithful. Amen.
this makes sense? Does this help at all? I hope it does. I really feel, because this was my prayer. I don't, this can just be a sermon. We forget about it. We go on our way. Oh, that was a great sermon. But I don't want that. I, I want to see. I am believing for fruit. Amen. I am believing for many of you, hopefully all of you, all of us, to experience some, some, some strengthening in these areas. Amen. In our faith. Because if, if we, as God's people in this church, can be a people of, of strong faith, and I believe that we are. And these people that I, that the survey, strongest Christians that I know, right? And if we can get even stronger, think about what, think about what God has done through us with areas of weakness in our faith. Amen. Amen? Think about that. What can God do with people who are getting stronger in their faith? There's no limit to what God can do. Stand with me this morning, would you? Bow with me. Father, we love you this morning. We thank you for your patience, Lord, your, your long-suffering, your understanding. God, as we learn how to walk with you, as we learn every day how to trust you more and more, we just thank you for being there for us. God, we face things that we've never had to face before, and how can we possibly know ahead of time what it's going to take unless... We just know that you're in those future events even before we get there. Faith, Lord, that could be, could be maybe the easiest thing for us, but ends up being the hardest. We just pray for a, a shift here this morning. Each person here today, Lord, we're, just, we're coming honest before you, confessing our own weaknesses, confessing the areas that are lacking in our faith, asking you, Lord God, to just impart your word impart your healing in us impart wisdom strength resolve love make us a people Lord God that, that don't waver let our faith be unwavering unmovable unshakable concrete faith when the enemy comes to speak lies Lord, to cause cracks in the foundation of our faith, I pray, God, that you would let us hear only truth. For every lie that Satan speaks, let us hear a thousand words of truth in our spirit. God, that we stand in faith. Hallelujah. God, as you search this place today, you see the hearts that, that haven't exercised their faith in you at all yet. They stand here today with only that measure of faith to be saved here this morning if they will receive you. And I pray that you deal with those hearts this morning. That they might come to you by faith. Be saved from their sins. Forgiven and cleansed and made new. But they never turn back from this journey. God, we thank you this morning. We feel your presence in this place today. God, only I've delivered my word, or your word. I've delivered what you've placed on my heart, Lord God. And so now, from this moment forward, is, is a complete work of your spirit, Lord. You're the one that touches the hearts. You're the one that enables us to believe it, grab a hold of it, do what you want to do in us today, we pray.